So I'll talk a little bit about how we developed this process. Um, uh, the key here is that there, there were a number of challenges to this. We wanted a process that would produce little or no arabitol. Arabitol is made when you have arabinose in the starting material as well too. Even with fermentations, the main enzyme that carries out the reaction to convert xylose to xylitol will also convert arabinose to arabitol. Um, <coughs> a lot of these uh, uh, extracts from hemicellulose extracts have inhibitors in them that will prevent the fermentation from proceeding rapidly. So we have to make sure that the, the, that the fermentation is not inhibited by those, uh, by those chemicals that are, that are made during the production of the, of the hemicellulose. Uh, we, needed a, we needed an abundant feedstock supply, and actually we need to be able to tolerate uh, differences in feedstocks, uh, um, uh, both if we're using the same feedstock or can we even use a variety of different feedstocks. And then we had a set of process economic goals. We wanted to be able to come up with a process that produced at least 100 grams per liter of xylitol uh, and was essentially free of any sugars or other polyol contaminants at the end. So just uh, to kind of show you how um, the different sugars vary in different uh, agricultural and forestry products. You can see why birch tree is used here. Um, in birch wood, you've got almost all of your sugar is xylose. And very little, 1% is arabinose, 1% is glucose, and there's some others, but that's generally separated out when you remove the hemicellulose. Um, Corn, which is what we started working on, you can see is, is about two-thirds xylose to a third arabinose, maybe a little higher arabinose. Sugarcane bagasse is very high in xylose. I don't have other woods on here, but the other woods are much higher in arabinose than, than the birch wood. And so, uh, uh, so if you could find a process that could use any of these sources, that, that would be highly beneficial. All right, so, uh, so we developed a couple enzymes in collaboration with um, both the USDA and a uh, research group at the University of Illinois. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, one of the things we first developed was a xylose, specific xylose reductase. This enzyme uh, could selectively use xylose over arabinose at a much higher rate. So, so you got very little arabitol being formed. So if you look at this, brown line here is xylitol being made. Uh, we're consuming the xylose, which is the pink line, uh, and very little arabitol, which is the purple line at the bottom, is being made. You're making a little bit, but, but for the most part, you're, you're making primarily xylitol. Whereas most, most xylitol, xylose reductases will, will generate an almost equal mix of, of uh, xylitol and arabitol. Um, we have another route, again, for making xylitol that, that uh, goes through uh, d xylose doesn't, doesn't uh, uh, make any arabitol at all. And we actually have two or three different routes that we've developed for making xylitol. Um, and depending on the feedstock, we, we use one of these routes is better than others. 